Hello, fourth grade and lesson. Welcome to lesson 3-3. We're going to do some more work with arrays and with partial products. Now, arrays we've used plenty of times in the past where we're putting things into equal groups and rows. Today, we're going to see how we can break up our arrays in different ways to help us find the answers for more difficult problems. How can you use an array and partial products to multiply? The windows of a building on International Drive are in an array. There are five rows with 13 windows in each row. How many windows are in this array? How many windows are in one row? Select your answer. An array is an arrangement of objects in equal rows. There are 13 windows per row. There are five rows. Find 5 times 13. Five. So let's pause for a second here. And we can see that they made an array. They didn't make it the regular way we were used to making it with individual little counters. They used 10 rods and little one cubes. So this is still an array. These are still in equal groups. There's still 13 in each group. But when they group them this way, you're going to see how this makes it a bit easier for us to do the multiplication after. 5 times 13 is about 5 times 10 equals 50. There are 5 rows with 1 10 in each row. 5 times 10 equals 50. There are 5 rows with 3 1s in each row. 5 times 3 equals 15. 50 plus 15 equals 65. The numbers 15 and 50 are called partial products. 65 is the product. Okay, so let's pause here and take a look at what they did. So they counted all of the tens first. So they did the multiplication fact to find the tens. So five groups of tens gave them the 50. Then they did the multiplication for the ones that were left over. So five groups of three gave them 15. Now those two partial products, those, those are part of the answer. So remember partial comes from the word parts. So it's a piece of the whole, it's part of the product. So 50 was one part of the product, 15 was the other part of the product. When you add them together and combine them, you get a total of 65. So 65 is your actual product. It's the whole answer that you're working with. You can use place value to break factors apart and the distributive property to find partial products. Breaking the equation by place value shows multiplying the one digit number by ones and then tens. Five times three ones equals 15. Five times one ten equals 50. Add the partial products. 13 times 5 equals 65. There are 65 windows in the building. The okay, so pay attention to how they did this multiplication. This is different than what we are used to, right? We're used to regrouping and carrying over to the other side. What they did was basically what we saw in the previous step where they had it broken up with the tens and the ones, and they gave us the total for each part individually. Now you don't need to stack and organize it like this. You can stack and organize it the traditional way, the regular way that you're used to uh, when you are stacking and multiplying. But this way, you, I want you to just become familiar with how they got the numbers that they got. So when they did five times three equals 15, they put the entire 15 underneath. When they did five times 10, because that one is in the tens group, they got 50. So they put the entire 50 underneath and then they combined or added those two together to find their partial product. The product 65 is close to the estimate of 50. The answer is reasonable. All right, let's take a look at our notes before we jump into our guided practice. So over here in our example question, it says, how are the partial products represented with the place value blocks? So over here, you see place value blocks 
we see 13 in each row. So one 10 rod and three ones in each, in each row. And there's five rows. So the partial products are represented by the 10 rods, so the tens, and then the other part of the product is represented by the ones. So five times 10 is one set that'll give you the partial products. And then five times three will give you the other partial product. And once you combine those two, you'll find the whole product or the whole answer. So you're finding out how much these are first, then you're finding how much these are, and then you're putting it all together to find your answer. Now let's take a look at our notes for today. We're on lesson 3-3 using arrays and partial products to multiply. So make sure you have your lesson title and number at the top. Now, just to review, an array is when you arrange objects into equal rows. Partial products are part of your answer when you, when you multiply. Remember, partial means part of, and product is the answer to a multiplication problem. So if we have, for example, 3 times 12, I can distribute this, break it apart into 3 times a group of 10 plus 3 times a group of 2. 3 times 10 is going to give me 30. 3 times 2 is going to give me 6. These two are the partial products. They're part of the answer. I need to put them together and add them to find my total product here. Now, usually when I draw an array, what happens when I regularly draw an array is I'll draw it out like you're seeing here with the little circles. So I'll draw my array with my little circles, right? And I'll have three rows with 12 in each row. Now what they did was they drew it out with 10 rods and one cubes. So this is still 12, 10 and two more, 10 and two more, 10 and two more. Now what they did was they split the array this way. We split by place value. So they did three of the 10 rods. So they counted the tens first and then they counted the ones next, or you could have done it the other way around. It doesn't matter really which one you start with. So they found three tens is 30, three twos is six, and those are partial products. So we added those two partial products to each other, the 30 plus the six to get 36. So we know that three times 12 is equal to 36. Now let's go ahead and jump into our guided practice questions. Now let's take a look at our book for a guided practice. For number one, it says, explain how an array shows multiplication. So that's easy. We know that an array shows equal groups, right? So let's draw our line. Number one, an array shows equal groups. When we multiply, we also use equal groups to find our product. Now for number two. Number two and three says complete each calculation. So we have two times 24 and then three times 218. Okay, this is not that hard. So let's go ahead and get started here. So our first one is three times 24. Equals a number. So what we learned and what we were doing up here was we split the tens and the ones. So three times 24, I can have three groups with 24. So one, two, three, right? One, two, three, four. It's a little bit darker for you guys to see. So instead of drawing out the whole rods, I'll just do the lines and the dots to show my 24. Two, three, four. Okay. So I can do the three times the 20. There we go. Four, so two, four, six. So three times three times my twenty, and then I can do three times four. 
So three times 20, we know three times two is equal to six. When we're multiplying by multiples of 10, we add a zero to the end of it. So that's 60, so 20, 40, 60. And then three times four is equal to 12, four, eight, 12. And then I need to combine my partial products. So 60 plus 12 is equal to 72. So I know three times 24 is equal to 72. Now for number three, we are working with three times 218. Okay, so instead of using just the 10 rods, now we can use the 100 squares, right? The big 100 flat. So one, two, three. Okay, this one's not going to fit here. Let's go ahead onto the back side. So for number three, make sure we have enough room when we're doing our work so our work doesn't get cramped. Three times 218. So we can have one, two, and a group of 10 and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's one group. Here's our second group. And again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now you don't need to necessarily draw it out every single time, but for the first couple of times, I do want you to draw so that you're able to see what you're working with. I can also have you borrow our, um, our blocks from class so that you're able to practice this at home. So you can use our base 10 blocks to help you visualize or see what you're working with. All right, so let's break it up. Now we broke, we're going to break it up into place value. Now we have three place values that we're working with here. We have the hundreds, we have the tens, and we have the ones. So we're going to split it here and here. So let's start over here. Three times 200 in each group. And then over here, three times 110 rod in each group and then three times eight in each group. So 200, 10, and eight will give you the 218. Three times 200 is equal to 600 because we know three times two is six. We have two zeros here, we've got two zeros here. Three times 10, we know three times one is three. Since it's multiplied by 10, we add a zero on the end of it. And then three times eight, we know already is 24. Now what we need to do is we need to add our partial products. So what we're going to do is we're going to put these together. I'm going to stack and add them over here. So I'm going to do 600 plus 30 plus 24. Now stack and place value order always. Your ones on top of your ones, tens on top of tens, hundreds on top of hundreds. So zero plus zero plus four is four. 0 plus 3 plus 2 is 5. And then the 6, because we don't have anything to add to it, we're going to just drop it down as is. Now, I can also stack and multiply the regular way. So I can do 218 times 3. 8 times 3 is 24. Put the 4, carry the 2. 3 times 1 is 3, plus 2 is 5. 3 times 2 is 6. So I can see my answer here and my answer here match they are the same. So if I'm working with a two digit number, I can split into two groups. If I'm working with a three digit number, I can split into three groups, four digit number, you can split into four groups and so on. So you found the parts. These are your partial products, remember. Partial products. So this one, that one, that one. Those were all pieces of our answer, right? So to find the whole answer, we have to count the whole thing. This was one part, this was one part, that was one part. 
when we put all of those parts together, then we found our complete answer. So what you're going to be doing for the remainder of your work, so take a look at your independent practice here. Same thing. They're going to give you the numbers. So three times 13, you have three rows with one 10 in each row. So three times 10, you find your answer. Then you have three rows with three in each row. So three times three, and you find your answer. And then down here, you add together your partial product. So whatever you got here, plus whatever you got here, equals your total answer. Same thing over here. You're going to find your partial products and you're going to write in your answers. Make sure you complete everything on that page and the back page all the way through number 10. If you have any questions, let me know fourth grade. Otherwise, I hope you have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye-bye.